first stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. Happy Thursday, everyone, or as I like to say, happy Friday Eve. I'm Coy, thankful to be hanging out with you. Time for the best 10 minutes in news right here on CNN 10. Let's rise together. We start today with liftoff of the rocket we just saw. Yesterday, NASA launching its long-awaited Artemis moon rocket. The mission was a long time and a lot of money coming. NASA has spent more than $40 billion to date getting Artemis off the ground, but there were scrubbed launches, hurricanes, and mechanical issues that delayed takeoff for months. But the rocket finally got off the ground. This mission kicks off a key test of America's ability to send astronauts back to the moon. Can you believe the last time humans were on the moon was way back in 1972? That's 50 years ago. But hold on a minute, there won't be any humans on the moon just yet. There's no crew for this expedition. The rocket will come within 60 miles of the lunar surface before flying 40,000 miles beyond the moon and then looping back to Earth over three weeks' time. The journey will conclude with a splash when the rocket lands at sea on December 11th. We're going to hear now from CNN's space and defense correspondent Kristen Fisher about the first test flight of the Artemis moon rocket. This is, uh, of course, an uncrewed first test flight for the Artemis moon rocket. It is a SLS rocket, the Space Launch System rocket, with the Orion crew capsule on top. And so what we've seen over the last few hours is launch, uh, and then the capsule separating from the rocket and the rocket falling back to Earth. And now this little capsule, the Orion capsule, is now making its way to the moon. Uh, it's going to take about five or six days to get there. When it gets there, it's going to fly by very close to the moon, just about 60 feet off the lunar surface before then traveling farther out into space than any spacecraft uh, ever designed to carry humans has ever flown uh, before flying back to Earth testing out that all-important heat shield at the base of the Orion capsule before splashing down into the ocean. 10-second trivia, Thanksgiving-themed. What type of food was definitely not present in 1600s New England when pilgrims first arrived? Cranberries, pumpkin, potatoes, or corn? Potatoes, which are native to South America, hadn't been introduced to North America yet. They weren't established crops there until the 1700s. Officially one week away from Thanksgiving now. What's your favorite Thanksgiving side dish? Mashed potatoes, cream corn, cornbread or stuffing or dressing as some folks like to call it. Whatever you love, be sure to really love and appreciate it this Thanksgiving because due to inflation, Thanksgiving dinner will cost 20% more this year than last. And that was already considered the most expensive Thanksgiving ever. We'll hear now from chief business correspondent, Christine Romans, on what you and your families can expect at the grocery store this holiday season. On the menu this year for Thanksgiving, rising prices. Overall, prices are up 7.7% from last year, and grocery prices are more than 12% higher than a year ago. Here's what it means for the family grocery bill as you shop for the big day. First, the turkey. Per pound prices for turkey are up 17% year over year. An average frozen turkey costs roughly $2.38 a pound. That's up from $1.74. Now, you can blame the avian flu outbreaks and higher fuel, feed, and labor costs because of inflation running near 40-year highs. What about eggs? Eggs cost 43% more than a year ago. Butter and margarine are up 34%. Flour is up nearly 25%. Your pies are going to cost more to make. These higher prices could potentially change Thanksgiving plans. A new Wells Fargo report suggests some Americans may opt to eat out rather than shop and cook at home this year. Dining out also can be costly, the report says, but it may be a better value than one might expect. Government data backs that up. Year over year, the cost of dining out rose at a slower pace than the cost of a typical grocery store run. Speaking of Thanksgiving grubbing, one of the best parts is eating leftovers, in my opinion, like for days and days, right? But we all know some people get skeezed out by that. Did you know, though, that the United States wastes 108 billion pounds of food each year? 
Well, maybe it doesn't have to be like that. CNN reported on the science behind food storage with expert tips on how to best store your food and to keep your leftovers from going bad. The kitchen, the heart of our homes and fortress for our fresh food. Taking pride of place, these gleaming apples and bananas might look safe now. But when you open the fridge or cupboards a few days later, you can find your once fresh ingredients in a very different condition. And this often comes down to how you put them away in the first place. A lot of food is wasted. People buy in bulk and then end up not eating it. So much food, in fact, that if food loss and waste were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases. To keep food for longer and help the planet and your household budget in the process, there are a few things to keep in mind. One is time. So obviously the longer you keep something, it will eventually go bad. Oxygen, there's a lot of reactions that happen if you've heard of oxidation that kind of causes apples to go brown, for example, when you cut them. Moisture can uh, increase microbial growth, which is something that we want to prevent because obviously bacteria, molds, light can also cause foods to spoil a little faster. Like potatoes, they're exposed to light, they can turn green. Um, they produce sprouts, for example. So to avoid waking up to potatoes like this, you should keep them in a cool, dark place, in a breathable bag to avoid moisture, and away from fruits such as bananas. This is because bananas are climacteric foods, which means they produce a lot of ethylene. Ethylene, very fancy term, it's a gas that causes fruits and vegetables to ripen. That's why a lot of times when people are like, hey, you want to ripen something, put it in a bag with a banana because bananas produce a lot of ethylene, so it'll cause it to ripen faster. Salad leaves are another victim of bad storage, resulting in this all too familiar kitchen scene. If you notice kind of your leaves aren't lasting as long, a really great way is to rinse them off and make sure they're completely dry. Vinegar not only will help kill or monitor bacteria, but it's also very acidic. So most bacteria also don't like acidic environments. And remember the role moisture plays? Bacteria love water, and that's what they use to grow. So the more water you try to take out, the longer the fill lasts. So if you put a little paper towel in, keep it in your refrigerator, that will help keep the lettuce a little longer. But when it comes to herbs, a little H2O used correctly goes a long way. If you cut the bottom stem part off and kind of put them in some water in your refrigerator, that can help keep them a little longer. They're like a living plant, so they're in their little water and they're uh, drinking it up. Instead of in like a bag from the grocery store that kind of just like harbors just bacteria because everything's like stuck together. Today's 10 out of 10 is fantastic. Scientists discovering never seen before deep sea creatures at the bottom of the Indian Ocean near the Cocos Islands in Australian territory. These fish are freaky. There's a deep sea batfish looking like a baby Yoda thingy. And then this previously unknown species of blind eel. I mean, it makes me wonder what else could be down there or do we even wanna know? All right, all my sophisticated folks, it's about that time. I want to give a special shout out to Mariana High School in Mariana, Florida. We see you. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10. Go out and make someone smile today. Do the little things that make this world a better place.